You know those days you daydream of and look forward to the whole year? Today is that day. We're making our way to the highest mountain hut in the Alps, Capania Margherita. A place that will take us two days to reach, crossing glaciers and climbing to an altitude of over 4,500 meters. Today it's a bit of a rare mission for us because we're going to be staying at two mountain huts. Tonight we're sleeping at Rifugio Nifeti, which is at 3,600 meters. Which is great um, because at least that's going to help us break down a very big journey and acclimatize a little. Slow progress because both of our bags are very heavy. So a little bit of info. We're in a region in the northwest of Italy called Aosta, at the very end of a valley. We started off from a town called Stafal, and today we have about a six, maybe seven hour hike to Refugio Nifeti. Forty-two. <laughs> well, before before the end of World War Two. Mm -hmm. Oh my mm -hmm. God! Wow. Eighty. Eighty-one years old, and we're nearly at three thousand meters high. He's been a mountain guide for thirty-five years. Una vida molto molto bene. Molto bene. Sì. Yeah. Caminato molto molto. Oh, sì. Sì. What's your What's your name? Eh? Chris. Gian uh, Battista. Gian Battista. Jamba. 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 Nice Very nice to meet you. Hey, Viviana. Ah, Viviana. Ah. It wouldn't be one of our missions if it wouldn't have an element of strong ambition. <laughs> the plan tomorrow <laughs> is to go over three peaks that are over 4,000 meters high, traversing over them to get to this hut which is at like 4,550 meters. At the moment, it seems like we're the only people that are going on foot up to the Nifeti hut because there's also an option to go very close to the cable car up there. And we can also see this because there haven't been any fresh prints in the snow for a long time. And it's so challenging passing through the snow. With each step, we're sinking to knee level or deeper. I've definitely gone out to my short line already. I'm starting now to see the cable car that's going very close to these two huts. I'm puffed. What? I am puffed. That is a welcoming we're at an area now which is very dangerous and you risk essentially drowning if you do a mistake if somehow you slide down into that you risk drowning down there I 
many people are camping, it's amazing. Vlogging. Yeah. Oh yeah. YouTube though. Yeah. Okay. Train summit. <laughs> We got to the Mantova hut. For the avid viewers of Train to Summit, you might remember that we've been here before. Two years ago, Viv and I came here and we got caught into a whiteout trying to get to the Nifeti hut. We were completely lost, we couldn't see where we were going. And the thing that saved us was the fact that we heard the hut's generator from the distance and we just followed that sound. If you ask me, that's probably one of the scariest moments that we had in our mountaineering adventures. So that's the track. This is now the last leg until we get to the Nifeti hut. We have to do one big zigzag and we're there. Does it bring back memories of two years ago, Viv? Now we need to go up maybe 10, 20 meters on this Via Ferrata system. Definitely a bit more than 20 meters. How much do you think it is? 50. No better feeling then knowing you're closer to food. Tomorrow we're waking up at 3.45 a.m. having breakfast at 4 and then hopefully out the door by 4.30. I'm a little bit concerned because Viv's boots are absolutely soaked from all of the snow and ice that went in. I left them to dry overnight and hopefully they're gonna be alright by tomorrow. last night and as you can tell we're a little bit late I think it's about half five at the moment everything is a bit frozen in which is really good but there's also a wind that's stinging cold how are you feeling cold <laughs> I can see one of the mountains, the Balmenhorn. After we pass this one, we're gonna get the first sights of our objectives, the three peak traverse. That's Cornonero. That's Ludwig Shoe. <sighs> Those moments in the cold in the morning are now going behind us. The sun is here. The weird thing about mountaineering. Yeah. Day it's so hot you feel sick. And the next day you are so cold. I think you might lose a toe. That is a 45 degree incline to the summit of Cornonero.
well done. Well done. <laughs> Next stop, Ludwig Shoe. I know, but you got this. I know. It was easy coming up this thing. Satisfying? Yeah. That was good, wasn't it? to find a stranger that was super kind to give Viv a couple of tissues. Sort it out now? Okay, okay. I'll edit all the blood shots, don't worry. Please edit those. That is the Ludwig shoe. There is a wall of ice here. One zigzag and up to the summit. Shoe. <laughs> team. That one is the Parotu Spitzer, I think. On the right. Oh wow, and we can see in the distance. Capania Margherita. Yeah. That lip over there is going to be very gnarly, Viv. Nice. Those guys are going up what we just came down from. Behind us, you have some of the most beautiful and renowned mountains in the Alps. The Weisshorn and Zinalrothron, Dent Blanche and the Matterhorn. Let's go. That's the rock collapsed at some point. 
this is where we don't want to be right now we've been going at the painfully slow pace up on the slope and it's only now that I realized that that is the hut mate how is that a thing it's taking all of my feeling of accomplishment so far it's not even a big dog it's one of those small dogs Viv, how? I didn't believe you when you said dog. <laughs> you go, little buddy. You go climb those mountains. I honestly can't go that fast right now, even if I tried. What are you doing? Did you summit all the mountains? Yeah. You going to summit some more mountains? Let me tell you some cool facts about this hut. First person that has ever been on the summit of this mountain, Signal Coop, was Giovanni Nifetti. You might remember that name because they honored him by naming the refuge where we stayed at last night after him. The name of the mountain, Signal Coop, is named that way because the pile of rocks on the top is like a signal and another interesting fact is that when this hut was inaugurated the queen consort of Savoy Regina Margherita came here personally and was here at the opening of this mountain hut which was over a hundred years ago can you imagine that she came here in one of those big fluffy skirts the glacier must have been double the size that it is now. One of the things I'm most excited about yeah. is not only is it cool Campania Margarita, apparently they also do margarita pizzas. Final push. It looks steep. It is steep. later by the way anyone that will come from sea level to 4,500 meters within two or three days wouldn't feel too good we came here and then we went we checked in and went straight to bed the room that we're in has a leak which is great news because two of the beds are essentially out of order so then we're in a room with only four people, me, Viv, and two strangers. It is freezing outside, it is freezing in the hut. We're waiting because in a couple of hours from now, we're gonna have dinner, which is amazing at these huts because it's usually a three course meal. Then we're gonna go to sleep, wake up at like 4 a.m., leave at 4.30 again, and make our way all the way down in the valley. Thank you. 
5.30 now, a.m. and we're about to leave Cabana Margarita to go by that. Are you ready to get out of here? That was one hell of a night. <laughs> to say the least. Yesterday was probably one of the hardest nights that I had in a very long time. The rule in mountaineering is you climb high and then you sleep low so your body can adjust and Campania Margarita is very very high so throughout the time that we were there our whole well health started to deteriorate very fast um, but you could see the same happening to a lot of people around right, us it's a faithful. anyway long story short from about 11 p.m. last night I started vomiting I vomited three times during the night. I couldn't sleep. Um, we had someone come and got like choppered out of there. Yeah, a chopper came at like 3 a.m. Something like that. Um, and took someone away who was struggling. Yeah. Someone else in our room actually vomited in our room. And there was a gas canister with an oxygen, oxygen mask yeah. at a reception. So that someone was definitely using that. Um, we were speaking to one of the guides and he was saying that before you go to Margarita, you should always do two nights in a fetty. So definitely something to keep in mind if you're planning to do the route. Acclimatise well because that was horrible. A hundred percent. But lovely ever. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So we're now in Stepal after battling a uh, two day mission. You sound like you're dead. I am dead. <laughs> <laughs> you, <should. laughs> you want me to chirp up? We're absolutely exhausted. <laughs> what I wanted to say was that you never have any sort of style in these days. Look at these boots. Look, look at these socks. It's like 33 degrees outside and we have woolly socks on because we, we didn't change it and we need to go to our like the last hotel to pick up all of our stuff. When you say we didn't change yet, what's the real story? We changed on the cable car. <laughs> yes, there Chris. Was no one else yes, Chris. The cable car. We both took our trousers off in the cable car. <laughs> this is true. We yeah. were in our underwear. <laughs> 